today. We've got a lot of people writing in here. They're looking forward to you guys coming on. All right, good, Rick. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a good show tonight. We got a very special guest coming on tonight named uh, David Crony, and I hope I'm saying it right, too. Um, and, and what we want to ask tonight, Rick, let me turn this down, I think. What we want to ask tonight, the question we want to ask tonight is, you know, is is Watchtower, this is what we're trying to answer, is Watchtower a secret society? Is it is it a Zionist? I, I've heard it called a, Karz, what is it, Karzarian, Kazarian, uh, Kazarian Kazarian. Um, Zionist, Cabal Deep State, and, and we're going to try to answer that tonight. And we've got a guy coming on that uh, his father, his family was in, a very high place when it came to the money in Watchtower. They, they didn't know. Um, it had to do with, let me see what I got here. I've got his little bio, Dan. Okay, let me get to that. But anyway, let me just say to everybody, uh, welcome tonight. We want to welcome everybody, and we want to thank everybody in the suite. We want to thank everybody on the phone lines for joining in. And uh, Angela, why don't you introduce our guest, that David? That good. So David Croin, Cro how do you say that, Dan? Uh, crony, I think. Crony, okay. David was born into a strict, controlling Jehovah's Witness family and was kept in the dark for decades about his family's involvement as Swiss bankers for the Vatican. David worked in a career as a banker and broker and decided in his early 40s that he could no longer work in the corrupt system and left the bank banking industry seeking a solution to the corruption he had encountered. David found he had been compartmentalized and lied to his whole life began to awaken through a spiritual journey that opened up his spiritual abilities. With these newfound abilities, he dedicated his study to finding out who was running the planet. He learned who and what was running the planet and what he could do about it. David asked for help from Source and through his prayers and meditations was given the key to who was at the top of the control structure. David is here to share his story and inform viewers that there is a solution to the mess we are in. And his hashtag uh, thing is, is uh, um, hashtag unite. So welcome, David. I hope you're there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can yeah, hear you. You might turn it up a little bit. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, let me try just another mic here real quick. Thank you guys for inviting me. Really appreciate uh, this opportunity to uh, tell you and your and your great audience uh, what uh, my life has been in regard to Watchtower Society and the many other uh, different things I've encountered in my life. So Absolutely. Me, Glad to uh, have you. That's really awesome, Dave. We got a we got a lot of people listening in. You know, um, I, I guess where we're, where we want to start is we just want to ask you, Dave. You know, how'd you get involved with the organization? You know, just that sort of thing. How'd you get involved with it? How long you been in? And you know, when did you find out this stuff? You know, about your family. You, you know, and the money and the Vatican and all that. Just kind of build up to that. Does that yeah, sound good, yeah. Angela? Yeah. So, you know, which congregation did you start out in? You know, that sort of thing. Okay. Sure. Sure, guys. Um, I hope I'm coming in a little better now. Yeah, so is he coming great. in good, Rick? Is he coming in good? Uh, yeah, in fact, David, thank you. Thank you for coming in tonight. I'm here at the Control Center in Massachusetts, and you're coming through really, really good. Good. Just stay like you are. That's wonderful. Sounds good. Well, great. Again, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, let me jump right in. I'll tell you. So, um, basically, uh, my parents met at an international convention in Europe in, uh, like, 1961. Um, I was born in 65, and uh, what I ended up finding out as I started to grow up was that uh, everybody in my family was a Jehovah's Witness, literally. On both sides of the family, grandparents, uh, maybe stopped with the, with the great-grandparents, but grandparents were, um, and everybody else I was associated with and affiliated with. So I was, uh, of course, you know, um, going to meetings from a very young age, um, I would travel to Europe, uh, and I would uh, basically go to Kingdom Halls in Europe, and wherever I went, to uh, a printing facility in that country, um, I found myself um, with people that seemed to have a very high level of connection to the witnesses. Uh, many members of my family went to Bethel, um, and it was very interesting as a child. I was, you know, watching these people who had been part of my life go to Bethel and then come back as if they were anointed oh, wow. <laughs> by like a, 
you know, in some way, like, they literally, like, thought they were a mini Jesus, a little Jesus, is what I usually call it. And so they would come in with a, a big ego and attitude and generally in a, in a position of a better level of finance, um, which I thought was very interesting. Of course, knowing that New York was, you know, about a center of money and power, I can understand that, um, you know, you might come in contact with some of the individuals in uh, the organization that had, uh, you know, that had a lot. And that was the case with many of my family members. They seemed to magnetically drift towards people who had uh, a lot, you know, means, let's just say. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, it was very interesting as a kid just trying to figure it out. Now, I, uh, I'm an only child, and I, I just remember being in the hall I was very young, feeling like I was the only one there. Like, everyone else was like a zombie. Um, maybe my mom and, and, you know, my father really, he sort of bailed out of the... Uh, he bailed out of the, the um, what I guess you'd call it the truth, as they say, right? Um, probably when I was about somewhere between 7 and 10, and he really wouldn't go to meetings. He became more of a businessman. And uh, my, so my mother really took me to um, all the all of the, you know, two to three meetings a week. I believe it was like three yep, a week yep. that I would attend. So um, that's sort of a little bit of the background of how I started out, um, you know, and uh, there's just a lot to it, uh, you know? And so, I, I mean, if you want to go right ahead and ask me some more questions. Yeah, I'll yeah I'm curious, in. David, you know how you said that you started noticing that the people in the, in there were like zombies. Now, how did that come about? It sounds like a little bit of awakening or something yeah. where you're seeing some, you know, I don't know if you'd call it mental illness, but just some stunted growth or something. But you just, you started to see that at, at, it, at age 10? Yeah, and why? Well... You know, I just, I always felt like I was alone. You know, like, I mean, I had a very, let me just say, my parents were wonderful people. I had a very great upbringing, wonderful upbringing. Um, and, you know, uh, let's see. There's just, there's just a lot to it. But basically, I was an only child. And because of where I felt like when I grew up, I couldn't come in contact with anybody. I mean, I can remember when I was five being told Armageddon is coming tomorrow. So it's sort of like, here you are trying to begin as a young child, and you're basically being told the world is going to end. And that was the level of, I call, programming that I received at a very young age, which, of course, put me and locked me into fear, right? So now I'm in fear as a very young child, and I'm going to the meetings, and, of course, they're talking about Armageddon, and they're talking about all these sort of things. Now I'm sort of getting schooled a little bit via the Watchtower Awake and all of the other books um, as to all of these different things in the world, you know, um, as you know, you know, they talk about 1913, they talk about the World Wars, they talk about different, you know, levels of history, so for whatever reason, I had a, an, I had a uh, desire to sort of know history from a very young age, and I became a historian starting maybe at about age seven or eight, wow. and oh, I was geez. a history book, and my father was also a, a much of an investigator like myself, he always seemed to be looking for a bigger answer to why everything was going on the way it was on the planet. Um, so I fortunately began, uh, I fell, followed in his footsteps. And of course he now was gone from the, uh, from the witnesses, um, basically by the time I was around 10 or so or before. And so I, it was just my mother and my mother was a very kind, very, you know, wonderful lady who wasn't very pushy, was very mellow and, sort of let me find my own way. And uh, so what had happened to me is I started being targeted in my early teens within the halls um, for things like my hair was too long or, you know, they wanted me to dress a certain way. I mean, I was, it was just like, you know, it was a minimal bullying, let's say, mm -hmm. by the elders because, because my mother was, you know, looked down upon because, you know, she was married to my father who was still supposedly was baptized, but he wasn't attending so, you know, I, I dealt with that hate, honestly. You know, I dealt with that, like, negative, you know, all the, the people looking at you like you're less than because you don't fit in the program. Um, so that also was very was very uncomfortable for me. I had a hard time making friends because nobody seemed to be able to connect with me. And anybody I made friends with in the, in the hall, in the kingdom halls, uh, they would always try to get me in trouble. Let's just say that. I was a very good kid. I was a... An angel child, to be honest with you, based on what I've been told and what I remember, I never did anything wrong. I was always followed the rules, but 
you know, I think a lot of it was that these other witness children were jealous because I fit so well in who I was to being, you know, the, the ultimate little Jehovah's Witness boy. Um, and so I dealt with the bullying. I dealt with bullying at school. And so what had happened is then, you know, when I, I can just remember when I was in, like, somewhere around 12 to 15, was when I'd be going to the halls and I'd be looking around and I can actually remember sitting in the Kingdom Hall in San Mateo, California, where I was, uh, was my, mainly where I was, you asked where I, what congregation. Um, and I just remember sitting, we'd sit sort of in the same area. And I just remember looking at the hall and just feeling like, it was just like, it was like dark. It was, you know, and I'm watching everybody you know, 100% engaged in everything going on in, in the hall. And I'm sitting there going, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand what's going on. Well, I'll jump forward uh, 30 years, you know. Um, I, I, know I knew a lot as I exited the, the uh, religion, let's say, around 15, 16 is when I really exited. Um, but I really didn't really see a lot of truth about the, the, what I had been involved in until I was in my 40s, and I went to a memorial with my mother a few years ago, and that, that's when I absolutely knew, that's when everything came back to me. I was in the hall, watching everybody on their iPads, and they were zombied out. I mean, there was, like, no energy in the room, just like uh, it was a hypnotic spell on everybody in the room, and I saw it for what it was. I could feel the frequency weapons being used on me, um, and it was the tell. Uh, that really told me and opened me up to, to a lot of what I had been subject to. From that point on, I then was able to start having a lot of recall, um, and I've had a lot of, I had actually had a brain injury about 10 years ago, and it was actually, I almost died, but honestly, it was, it was a blessing, because from that brain injury, uh, my heart opened, and I received a lot of wonderful skills and understandings that I never had before. Uh, wow. So, for instance, yeah. I was opened up, you know, I was opened up to a lot of the things I couldn't remember as a child or events that never made sense but all of a sudden did. Um, I was very blessed because I have a, a very healing heart, and I see myself, I really like to call myself a healer, but I am, and I can heal people with my heart, I can heal people with my voice, I can heal people with my touch, and those are some of the gifts that I received from this brain injury. Um, wow. So, anyway. Cool. That's a lot of information, but... That's okay. You know, it's odd. You know, it's odd, David. We've had a couple different people on this show who had brain injuries, and they were given gifts. Yeah. And so the, you're, you're like, what, the third or the f- yeah. third? Yeah, last lady sir. had, like, psychic gifts yeah, and yeah. stuff, you know? Because, because of having some sort of an injury to the brain. I was going to ask you, Dave, did, did you ever get baptized, or did you get out before then? This is the biggest tell for me. I never got baptized. I avoided it at all costs. Good and it was wow. an internal message. It was an internal message that I could, believe me, I had been, like, surrounded, and I would ditch, and I would bail. And I said, I will make that decision when I'm damn well ready, when I was in my pre-teens. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I just avoided it. I just, by some miraculous event, I mean, I was even at the River Jordan, like, we were traveling through the Middle East one time with my family, and that was the time where I was really you know, you're a get, get baptized in a, you know, biblical river, yeah. right? Yeah, that would be uh, amazing. Didn't happen, you know, didn't happen. So, you know, I see that as, like, greater source really keeping me from what I now know is a very dark practice, in my opinion. I know maybe a lot of your listeners may not agree, but what That's I do okay. know is that that is part of a ritual um, that has been cast upon uh, and is part of the religious programming that exists on many levels of Christianity. Well, you know, you know, I so, think, I mean, David... I think you might have been operating, you, you know, I'll just say it. I, I think you may have be, been operating on a sixth sense. No, I was going to say you, that. You know, because how, most people, you know, aren't that grounded within themselves or, or have that. They're, you, know, you know, some of us are codependent. Everyone else is getting baptized and, you know, or, or whatever reason. Maybe you did fall in love with Jehovah. But I think it's interesting that at that young of age that you were that aware, that you had this knowing that there was something wrong in there. And and I want to say this, Dave, you were spared a lot. I mean, thank God, thank God, you didn't have to take the oath. And I'm going to call it an oath, and I'm going to call it an occultic oath. 
And what the oath is, David, is you have to say, this is God's visible organization on earth. This is our mediator. Not Jesus, not, not Jehovah, not that Jesus appointed this organization to give us our food. So unknowingly, David, I gave them permission to take over my spiritual temple, my God-given temple within my mind. I gave Watchtower 100% co- permission to teach me, to discipline me, to, to tell me what to do, you. to brainwash me, to, to put fear into me, and to run me. When I said, I agree that you are God's visible organization on earth, I'm going to tell you this, Dave, I did not exist. This is a real oath, and it's a real curse. I did not exist anymore. I was Watchtower. Watchtower was me. I was one with it, and they ran me. They ran every part of me. They told me where I could get educated, what girls I could marry and not marry, what schools I could go to and not go Every part of my life was run when I took that oath. And you know what? You take the same type of oath when you go into masonry. It's the same thing. There's serious oaths with serious consequences. So thank God, Dave. Thank God you didn't have to go through that. Yeah, I let you know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I call my creator, you know, basically that source uh, or the creator of all that is. Okay. Um, for, some, for whatever reason, I always, you know, I, I sort of like the name Jehovah, and, you know, I'm actually into reggae music, and they talk about Jaw all the time, but, um, you know, I've come to learn that that's, uh, let's see, more or less created, uh, just like you're saying. I mean, everything is basically, you just understand the way the Satanists work. I mean, everything is upside down and inverted. You know, and now I, I literally, like, I look at a lot of words now, and I spell them backwards to see what I'm viewing. Wow. You know, I've become very aware of a lot of the, the, their symbol and branding. I mean, you know, people may not know that Mother Teresa was, you know, one of the biggest child traffickers on the planet. And if you look at her in her pictures with the blue and white little uniform she had on, and then you go look at Epstein Island and you see the exact same color, you start to realize what you're dealing with. Yeah, it's all you over know, the internet actually about children. that. Yeah. It's, it's actually all you over know, the internet. Traffic, the children. I mean, these are the kinds of things that are right in front of us that most people never see. Yeah. I personally have had after this brain injury, I had the ability to, like, really dissect things and see them from a different angle, view them outside the box, decompartmentalize them. I mean, that's probably one of the biggest gifts is that after my brain injury, I realized that I'd been compartmentalized my whole life and that um, I needed to study all the compartments to truly understand what it was that was happening. And as I said, I've got that story, and I will be telling you about it, about what I did find as far as the at the very top of the control structure. Well, yeah. you know, so. go ahead. Maybe we could talk about what happened with your family in the banking industry. I know everybody's itching to know a little bit more. They're starting to research you on the Internet. They've been to your website already. Um, they're, they're getting to that point where they just are dying to know more. So maybe we should get into it a little bit more. Yeah, sure. Well, so, you know, this is something that, like, I've done a few uh, interviews recently, and some of the interviewers sort of, twisted things around. Yeah. So let me let me tell you, um, like, really, truly where, uh, how this all occurred, okay? Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to think of where to start. But um, the, as I said, the brain injury started to unlock a lot of different things. Now, after my brain injury, I went on a spiritual journey, and I also went on a historical journey. And because I was actually sort of uh, disabled for a few years while I was recovering from this horrific accident I'd had, um, you know, I I had some time. I had time to do research while I was recovering. So, you know, that was was another blessing from my creator. Was it a a driving accident, Dave? Was it a car accident? uh, No, actually, well, it's a long story, but it's related to alcohol, which was another um, horrific thing that the uh, cabal had cast upon me to uh, basically not allow me to use my gifts and my, my seeing. Um, so, you know, I, I did have an, an issue with alcohol, and I had a, a, quite a really horrific accident at the end of my um, run about 11 years ago. I haven't had a drink in 11 years, but... Um, Congratulations. You know, this time yes. it was, you know it, it's just a, it's an odd reality. I just really maybe not walk through the whole thing. But 
at the end of it, I almost died. I was literally in a coma for four days, and that's when, you know, I had this brain injury. And uh, the whole thing was rather horrific. And I actually was, they said to my family that I would make it out, that I would, one, I would die. In the event, I, if I survived, I would be brain damaged. Um, and they were literally getting ready to pull the plug on me, and I really believe that was probably the cabal that was in there trying to shorten me, because I really believe that I'm a star seed, and I'm here for this time on the planet right now. Yes. All the things that happened to me in my life, you know, bringing me here for this moment, because I can see truth at a very high level, uh, I, I, and the people that I have come in contact with are the same. And I'm meeting people every day that have very high levels of truth um, because of the types of things they've gone through. And most of them have suffered gravely, like, you know, from, I mean, the Watchtower, you know, society's bad enough, but, I mean, I have friends that were tortured, like, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways. Uh, they were sex trafficked. They were... Uh, used in all different horrific ways that most people really don't even want to hear about. Wow. But, you know, I realized that I had sort of escaped a lot of that. But now these same individuals are coming in my life because we all have the same desire, and that is to shift this planet. We know that we're really, you know, that we're really close to getting through all of this crazy that's going on on the planet. I mean, re the truth of the matter is, based on what I know, Armageddon should have already happened about 30 times in the last five years. Um, they've tried so many World War attempts, and they've all been thwarted. Yay. As recently as December, uh, uh, last December, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese were literally off the coast of the United States. They had 10 battleships off the coast of the United States ready to invade. There were troops underground in Canada ready to invade. Uh, most people might find that hard to believe, but I've seen the evidence. And I can tell you that there are individuals on this planet that have high levels of technology that were able to literally incinerate those battleships. And if any of you out there are willing or, or able to do research and find out where these 10 battleships that were uh, basically disintegrated in December are, uh, they're not in the possession of the Chinese uh, military at this point in time. So, uh, you know, again, there, there are a lot of things that have happened, but we're, you know, sources there. You know, our creator is there for us. This planet is not all dark, you know? It's, it, is, it is a planet that is both dark and light, and we all have light sides, and we all have shadows. And again, one of the reasons I believe I've been able to really sink into what's going on on the planet is I've done all my shadow work. I've done so much of it, looking at myself and, you know, getting good. I mean, honestly, you know, being the best person I can be at the highest integrity the highest ethics, of the highest morality. And, you know, with that comes truth. And, but you have to do it first. You can't want it and try and speak it. You've got to do it for yourself first. So I got a question, Dave. You know, it, it's interesting, you know, one of the gifts, you know, a lot of people, you know, they wonder, you, you know, why can't the witnesses you know, see clearly, you, you know, because, you, you know, you had mentioned about, you know, the dark forces turn things upside down. Well, one of the things the witnesses do is like when 1975 happened, you know, basically they said, well, we, we never said that was going to end. The world wasn't going to end, but yet they did. They, they said that was the date, yeah. you know, so many years. So, so they were gaslighting. They didn't, you, you know, they didn't say they were sorry. Lots of people left. But then they did it again with the generation prophecy. Then they did it again with the overlapping generation. But here's the question I was going to ask you, because a lot of people wonder, you know, like for me, I, I, I went through about the second prophecy, you know, the generation prophecy. Uh, it, was, it was all going to end, you know, 70 or 80 years from 1914. And then when that passed, they came up with new information. Well, I woke up, and I just, you know, I started asking the brothers, hey, you know, did we just pass a prophecy? And they looked at me with this look like you saw, you know, like that empty look, that stare in the face. You know, Dan, what are you, what are you asking? I'm like, I mean, I freaked out. I was like you. I was awake. I, I was like, yeah, you know, like I'm just asking a simple question. You know, we were reading all these books, and it was saying that 70 or 80 years from 1914, it was going to end this generation, and nobody was awake. So the question I wanted to ask you was you mentioned, you know, frequency weaponry, that you were able, when you went back to the Kingdom Hall, you said you saw, you, you knew that somebody or something or, 
some entity was using frequency weaponry on you or, you know, within the hall. Could you just explain that a little bit? That's an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think it would answer some questions as to why people, you know, wonder why people are immobilized in there, why they can't wake up, why they're so fast asleep. Yeah, well, um, that's a great question. I've never heard um, it before. That's why I was me, asking. I never let, heard of frequency. Real, real quick, let, let me just talk to one thing you mentioned earlier that's very important okay. to connect to you for your, your listeners. Okay, what you mentioned with the 1975 is the generation and the, that's called the waiting, okay? Now, that's happening daily here currently, okay? It, it, you know, first it was, wait for Trump. He's going to fix everything. Wait for Trump. Oh, Q says, you know, if you guys ever follow the Q movement or know what it is, yep. Q says Trump's going to save the world. Well, as we can see, four years went by and nothing ever happened, right? And so what that was, was that's the waiting game, okay? The, the cabal keeps everybody waiting, and that's how they control them, because there's never really anything that is manifested on any level. It's just always another promise, another delay, another more time. And that's what's going on right now. And I want to jump into that because that has to do with a lot of what I'm here to talk about, which is the restoration plan and the new financial system that I know about. You know what? Um, but I, I'm kind of to, I'm kind of curious about how your family how how did you discover that your family was was in the Swiss banking? And t can you talk about your family in the Swiss okay, banking? Yeah. Sorry, Angela. Yeah, try, my brain is uh, moving a little fast. Let me go back. That's all right. That's all right. So, as, I, as I said, when I when I started to be able to recall things, I always wondered why my last name was used in the news. Crony. Bill Clinton and his crony. Hillary and her crony. Uh, you know, Epstein and his crony. Whoever, right? Generally, it's, they're, they're associating our last name with somebody in power who has possibly done something wrong, and what it is is a sort of the blame game. They're blaming us. Who are the cronies? Well, we're the we're sort of the people that are their friends that are controlling them. This is a reference. If you look at that in the history of how it's been used in the news since I think it was coined back in the 30s or something when I was reading about it. But look, our family name was drug into literally something that's very common, and it depends on what generation you're in. An older generation will have heard that many, many times. The younger generation, not so much. But I heard it my whole life. And one day I go, wow. I started doing research on the Swiss, which is, that's, the, that's where this name comes from. It comes from Switzerland. Well, I started doing research and I could not believe what I found. That basically the cronies were some of, the, they were some of the most private bankers of the Vatican. And what had happened is in the, in the late 1800s, they had separated from the Vatican and basically left. So it's very, very interesting because um, I then looked at my family line here in the United States, and what I found was that the original relatives that moved after the event I just spoke of, because basically they were, they, they were just like me when I left the banking industry. They said, enough is enough. We're not going to sell our soul for your corrupt, evil, whatever, even though you're paying us well. So they left Switzerland. They came to the United States. The problem is they didn't know they were being followed. So, they were set up here in the United States, and my great-great-great-grandfather was one of the first people to get on the Oregon Trail. His name is in the Oregon Book of, uh, the book of Oregon, which shows how Oregon was originally established. He was one of the first people across this Applegate Valley, which is close to where I live, who came through. And, they, and that family ended up up near Portland, right outside of Oregon City, where that was the end of the Oregon Trail. Well... All of those, the, when I say that, that they were followed, well, they set them up with a new religion. Well, sort of, a, it's more of a control structure, but it originated out of the Vatican slash Swiss, and it was the Salvation Army. So now, all of a sudden, this great-great-grandfather became the head of the Salvation Army, and, or close to it, he was one of, I think he wasn't the head, but he was at the very top, and... They then got all their power there. They were their landowners. The people that live up in that region, all with my last name, they're all landowners. They're very well to do. And from what I've gathered and found, it appears that many of them are amazing. So 
again, it's sort of like you can try to leave, but do you really leave? No, because they followed him and they ended up using. Now, what I see happening was my grandfather was, he left that. When he left it, he was, uh, what do you call it? He was basically kicked out of the family when he became a Jehovah's Witness and married my grandmother. So, again, here we go with another deviation of religion. We leave this Christian organization, the Salvation Army, and now we go to the Witnesses. Well, again, they were waiting for him when he got to the Watchtower Society, and they roped him in. And I watched it all go down from a child up until they passed away. And, you know, grandfather was an elder, you know, and I could not believe the things that were going on in their hell, in their kingdom hall. It was like Peyton's place. It was like, you know, I don't know. It was, it was just unbelievable to me that these people who said that they were so Christian and so of the Bible and so of God, that they were doing such crazy, horrific things, sleeping around and just doing drugs, and, I mean, you name it. It was going on. And my grandfather was there, was part of it. So, again, um, there's more to it because, again, my own personal awakening. Now, I've also done some spiritual work where I've done, you know, timeline regression and I've been able to go back and through memory and through assistance of others see what has happened and in, in what I was part of in my ancestral line. And it was also confirmed multiple times that what I'm telling you is real. Okay? Yeah. Um, what I've seen in, in my personal view of life in my five decades is that no matter what, where we go, we're, there's someone there to catch it. We, apparently, my family, whatever the DNA and bloodline is, it's special. And so they follow us. And this is what people really need to know out there, is that when you're born, especially in a hospital, they take your blood and they have technology that knows everything about you, where you you your lineages, who you're related to, and you're put in a court category based on that. Wow. And I know that that's what's been done to my family because, in all honesty, when I talk about the chase of these individuals who wanted you to be part of their evil plan and you leave them, they chase you. And I know this from many of the friends I have who left, you know, various organizations, Black Ops organizations, CIA, SSP, which is a secret space program, I have all kinds of associates that they're still chasing this day. They're still targeting. Well, that was done to my family and my father. And, um, you know, that's another story. But, wow. So, you know, without really going real deep into some more a real personal stuff, you know, that's basically what I where I got this information and what I see. Now, I did, I've done a tremendous amount of study on, on the Swift. And most people do not know there's a video out there called, um, let's see, it's called, um, gosh, uh, Octagon Switzerland. Octagon Switzerland. If you can find that video, it will blow your mind as to what Switzerland oh, is. Yeah. If Switzerland is literally what is the power center of the planet. Wow. That's where all of the active headquarters of operation. You can see this because who guards the Pope? The Swiss Guard. Who gave Hitler his money to start World War II? The Swiss. What is the shape of the, uh, what is it, Eagle's Nest, where Hitler did all his war wounds and stuff? It's an octagon. It's all connected. And when people can see the connection, they start to understand how incredibly in front of your face this stuff is, but people don't pay attention. So, as far as the Swiss goes, and what you might find in that Octagon Switzerland video is the fact that any building in Europe generally that is octagonal shape represents the top of the power structure on the planet. Okay? So, those are the types of things that I started studying and going real deep into. And I realized who I was. I have a special bloodline, and they, this bloodline has been manipulated, in my opinion, and used for the controllers of the planet. Now, who are the controllers of the planet? Well, that's a long story. But um, as far as what I really would just like to tell your viewers is, if, if they don't know, look, there are three, up until now, there have been three major cities, which are actually not even cities, they're their own private entity, 
and that's Washington, D.C., which is the military wing, London, inner city London, which is the banking and money, and the Vatican, which is the um, military operation. It's basically the military and operational control. Now, that is that was something, again, I looked at. And the problem is what I just told you is a three-piece puzzle. The fourth piece is the one that's called the hidden hand. And the hidden hand is the Swiss. Hmm. So this is what I'm trying to get out with to, to your viewer or to your listener is that, look, this whole thing is just one big massive power structure and literally every religion on the planet was created out of that power structure over a long period of time. And if you guys know, well, the victor of wars takes the history. So, you know, these top 1% of people on the planet have been around since for a very long time, actually well before Sumerian time, and they have always maintained their control through blood, blood lock and they intermarry. And now you can see that, you know, if you guys go do your research, you'll see that most of the people we see on TV are intermarried to uh, other bloodline families yeah. and other bloodline factions. That's so true. You know, so the Jesuits are married to... You know, they're, they're married to, like, the, the Bush family or whatever. It's just, right. they're crossed, you know, they're, they're, and so, again, there's all these different tells on it. What, what, David, and, what, do they, what do they call us who are not of those bloodlines? And what, I know they call them the elite, but what else are they known as? That are not of the yeah, bloodlines? No, yeah, I, the, the elite. Yeah, the elite. The I mean, it depends on where you're coming from. You know, the Jewish call it with us the goy. Where, you know, if you look into that, you'll see we're all expendable. Mm-hmm. You know, they can have sex with our children at, you know, young ages. I mean, it, the, the Talmud and, uh, you know, some of these other books that are related to Zion are just some of the evilest, evilest creations ever. And if you read them, you'll see they're all satanic. Yeah. But do you think... Do you think... my lengthy search of, of religion, what I have found and what I truly believe is that all religion was created out of the Talmud. So from that, that's that, and when you start to see the trickery of how everything's been done, like the fact that the Arabs are not Arabs, they're actually Wahhabi Jews. How long they're is, actually Kazarian. How long is the Talmud? If you look at Yahoo, how long is, how long is and the, you see that Netanyahu is a Kazarian, he's not Jewish, he wasn't born in Israel. How long has the Talmud been around? Um, I really don't know exactly, but I, I gather... Probably pre Bible, obviously, is pre Bible. Um, and I, I really, I don't even know, you know, like, I mean, you got to sort of look at who King James was, you know? Yeah. Uh, Satan. Uh, you know? Uh, so, like I say, um, so many things that we really believe, want to believe, that hit our heart as being truthful from what I found are not. And it's, it's heartbreaking. I mean, it's yeah. heartbreaking for me to have believed in. in and I believed in all these things for so long, and it, it, it's honestly one of the hardest parts of the journey that I've been on, is to get the truth and be able to actually look at it and and study it until you get an understanding of what you really believe. Yeah, and, you know, that's, that's, that's the journey that I've been on. But that's, a lot of people aren't willing to, to look at things like child trafficking and adrenochrome and baby farms and things like that, but they exist. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. You know, you know, a lot of people have always wondered, you know, where watchtower money goes to, you know, you know, that's one thing we were never told you weren't in it as long as I was, but we, we never, I mean, in most organizations that I've been in and I've been in a lot of them, there was always a, you know, they were never afraid to say we lost money this month. We made money. Um, here's what we had. You know, there was always an expenditure, you know, in most of the companies I worked with, um, and in the witnesses, there never was that. There, there was just an assembly. We were short, but we know Jehovah will make it up. And everybody gave a few more dollars on the last day. But nobody really knows, I mean, you know, where this money goes. Where's the money going that they're selling off Brooklyn? Where's the money going? They're selling off millions of dollars where the kingdom halls a month now. Where's that money going? And, you know, do you think that's going right into to the Vatican or right into some secret society at the very top? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, my view of the structure, I'll just say this. It was years ago that I got, I talked to some people who, 
you know, had exited the, the exited the, the witnesses and what was brought to my attention was the, they were talking about the board of directors for the Watchtower Society and how they had, I'd, I was talking to some people who had written books. Uh, it was a lady who had been, you know, whatever, sexually abused and much, much more by her elder father. But she was, you know, she was, she had already written a book and she was re- writing more or, or wanting to write more. She was doing research telling me about how that was all working. Well, she was never able to, she said she searched, she wrote letters, she had attorneys on it. Nobody would ever find the names of the board of directors of the Watchtower Society. And why is that? Well, probably because they're, you know, that's, they control everything. You know, first of all, so they have that ability to cover it. Um, where does the money go? Look, it's just like the Catholic Church. It's literally part of the Vatican at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, how does it filter? Look, I do know a lot about those channels. And I, this is, again, you know, when I start talking about the restoration plan and the new monetary system, you know, that's something I can break into as well because I have a very lengthy history of all of the atrocities that the U.N. and the uh, United Nations and the Vatican, and literally they're all one and the same. I mean, they're all, uh, you know, three-letter agencies which are, you know, they're not of this government. They're separate corporations. So, you know, what we're really dealing with in this world, just like the Watchtower Society, is a corporation. Now, what type of corporation is it? Well, it's really not. It turns out that from what I understand, the, you know, the Watchtower is, is under a very uh, private tax code that was only reserved for the elite. Mm-hmm. Now, again, in my research, I, I've, I've been able to find out what that tax code is. And I know, I know people, I can set people up tax-free just like the Watchtower runs that tax-free. Mm. You don't have to do, you don't have to do all the reporting that you do with a 501, which is, uh, which is what basically all of the churches are generally under, and that's very restrictive. You gotta follow rules, you gotta be, you know, do all these filings. The tax code that is used for the upper elite, once you establish your entity under that tax code, you literally don't have to file taxes or you're not accountable basically to anybody. Sweet. We're all going to want your email address. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you want that info, you know, I'll give it to you. But, um, yeah, so I've become also an expert in how they run their show. It's all trickery. I mean, everything is just a trick. You know, there's another video out there. Everything you know is a rich man's trick. You know, I mean, go look that one up on YouTube. You know, it's it's, it's mind-boggling. But, you know, I know a lot of witnesses, they don't get, a, if you exit, you're so shut down, like I was for decades sometimes, that you, your brain can't even open up to much of the stuff I'm talking about. For me, it took a near-death experience, a brain injury, and to put down, the, and put down alcohol 100% to get here. Yeah, I went yeah. through an unbelievable path to be able to open my brain and be able to look at things that a lot of people would never look at they don't believe, and you got to understand, you've been programmed. If you've been in the witnesses, I mean, look, the biggest thing in my life that I had to overcome was not trauma, was not relationships, was not a divorce. It was, it was basically the, what I had, the programming that had been done to me as a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. It is, I'm still, I've still got these subconscious programs running in my background. Man, man. And the thing is, you know, that's why it's important that your listeners understand you don't have to believe me. I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to tell you my truth, my story, right. tell you if you have an open mind and you go out there and do your research, you will see things you never ever would ever believe. You generally will. You know what's you, interesting, Dave? How do you when, yeah, what's that? when I was a witness, you know, I was in there 40 years and you know, I heard, you know, Russell was a Mason and, you know, he was buried in a pyramid with Masonic emblems on it. And I would have never believed it. I did a short stint, a short, very short stint in Masonry. And I saw those mm-hmm. emblems. I, I saw the Rosicrucian emblem on one of the little benches. And I said, oh, my God, that was on a watchtower, and you so know, Zion's watchtower. And in letters that we saw. And in letters. And then I saw the 32nd degree Mason on on the watch, on the books, on, on several books, one was called At One Met, 
If you look at the book, if you look up Jehovah's Witnesses and at one minute, you'll see the eagles face backwards. The only thing they don't have is the 32nd degree emblem in between. But there is Masonic symbology. All, but I, I was like you, Dave. I wouldn't have believed it. But when you wake up, it, it takes courage. It takes courage to say this was Masonic, which which means it, it you know it, it was it, in my mind it was worldly. It wasn't. It was you know the 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 Masons. You know you might call them Illuminati or whatever, but they're Masonic based. I mean, Russell. If you go online, you'll see his burial thing a pyramid with with that is masonic cool. emblems all the way around it yeah he's if buried it, that in don't, a pyramid yeah that don't make it any clear but like dave said it takes a while to see this stuff and then also too um russell's uh, this one guy sharing on the on the screen here that russell's one of the 13 bloodlines well anyway somebody said that that russell is related to the clintons oh yeah wow. that's what i heard so i, I wonder wow. if that's yeah. true if you look at his pictures, he looks Kazarian. Now, I I have a very sharp eye, and, looks, and I can tell you, I've traveled the world many times, so let's just say, for whatever reason, I'm able to, like, tell ethnicity just by sight. I mean, really, fairly well, 80%, 90%. Wow. But if you look at the local well, back in the day, you'll see the tip, and you compare it with other Kazarian individuals, you'll see that's who he was. And this is what I'm getting at. The, a lot of the Jews, they're not Jewish. They're Kazarian. They come from the they come from the Khazars. They come from, you know, up near in Russia. And, you know, go do that research. I mean, you'll see they had planned. There's a city up there. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like one of the most modern cities on the planet. And that's their, you know, their goal is to open that city as, the, as basically the headquarters of the planet. Wow. Um, what does Kazarian so, mean? I've well, heard that a lot lately, Dave. Kazarian. Like, what is it? Is, like, is that like mafia or what? Demonic. Right? Well, Look, when you say mafia, it's all, look, there are, okay, let, let's start here. Okay. Let, let me give you guys some real juice, okay? There, there is a control structure that I have not only viewed, but I have studied. It is so massive, most people will absolutely not even believe it. The, the control structure has over 4,000 components, okay? Wow. That's how, much, that's how busy they've been building structures around us to control us, 4,000, okay? So, if you look at just from a, a smaller level, okay, of control and power, there are, um, let's see, there there are uh, different councils. There's an individual on the planet known as the Pindar. Now, I've known about the Pindar for about, let's say, 12 years. Um, and... Um, the Pindar basically was very close to the top of the power structure in what was known as the Council of Thirteen. Or, yeah, ca yeah, Council, Council of Twelve, I believe it was. So anyway, this was the leader. Now, what's real interesting is this is not some alien or some god that flew down from heaven. This is a human being, generally, um, who is just given a title, okay? And they're given a title, but they end up being at the very, very highest level. And I studied that for years and years and years, and I thought literally that was the, the top of the power structure. Well, about two and a half years ago, I was praying, and I was talking to my creator, and I said, I am done with all this alt media, filtering through everything, trying to find answers, who are the Illuminati, what's the, you know, what is this, what is that? And that's when I asked my creator to please give me a sign. Let me give me a trail I can follow. And that was at that time that I was exposed to what's known as the Mana World Holding Trust. And that is a very long story. It's no that trust is no longer. There's a long story around it. But it was the it was basically what you could consider to be the Earth's bank account. Okay? Okay. And this Earth bank account was controlled by a single individual, it turned out. Now, I know people have heard the term King of Kings. Well, you know, uh, I think it was it? The, the, the King of All Kings. And, all, you know, there's all these different titles. But basically, it tells you if there's a King of Kings, there's somebody at the top, right? Yep. And then, like I was saying before, you know, I, um, I'm listening to the Dalai Lama, and he's saying... 
the savior of humanity will be the modern Western woman. Well, as I started looking into this man of world holding trust, I found that the old controller had left his position and there was a new person in the, the position and that person was a woman. And she's a modern Western woman, an American, by the way. So it took me a long time to assemble and to gain, let's see, um, uh, basically to gain the total belief that this is true because, you know, I've been looking at trickery and almost everything that I've looked at for years was dissolving. You know, I'd follow a trail and it would never lead to anywhere, it would just dead end. Well, this particular trail did not do that. This particular trail led me to, know, to knowing that there literally was a single individual in sitting behind a basically a very high uh, high technology computer, which is all known as the quantum mapping system, and that 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 is where we're at right now on this planet. Now, so David, what does that mean? Um, we've, well, got, we've got someone in here who's uh, just dying to know. Um, who was your grandfather? Yeah. And um, anyway, he wrote elite, your mother's elite maiden Jew name. And, the, and your mother's maiden name. And then he wanted to verify that you're from a Swiss bank family def, and not a JW family, right? Well, you can look at my name and do all the research you want. I, you know, for me personally, um, it takes a lot for me to even speak this out. And I'm not really going to mention family names. It's just not a, something that I really want to do. Not that I'm hiding anything, it's gotcha. just for their own protection. Gotcha. You know, again, a lot of these people are still in the truth, and I just believe that, you know, there could be some fallout. So I really don't want to you got um, it. Oh, yeah. make them sense. subject to that. This is my own personal story, and, you know, like I said, the way I speak should let people know. I, You know, I've, I've seen the inside and outside of, the, of this organization, as well as many other religions. So, yeah, I like your story. I like experiential what you're yeah, saying mm -hmm. because, you know, that's the way I talk too. I share my story, take it or leave it. It's it's my story and yeah, you know, that's just the way it is and you know, you're transparent, I can tell. You're integral and you're you're opening your heart to us and yeah. I'm curious, you know, um, you know, you were at the highest levels of finance and and you left it. And and for for, for, for I guess you were seeking you you didn't want any part of the corruption and and you asked God you pleaded with God show me show me which is a good thing to do I think that's the highest thing we can ever do is say God help me find my way help me find the truth that sets me free help me and out of that we get right. answers and I agree you got some answers and I, so I'm curious if you just kind of carry on yeah well thank you you know and uh, like I said I'm I'm, I'm speaking truth here, but this is about me and my story, really. You know, like I said, yeah. I so much of this is new to me. I've never really had a whole lot of chance to talk to anybody about this. Like, this is very private, what I I'm understand. telling you. Totally. Been up until this point. Yeah. You know, the reason I'm opening up about it is because, again, Source tapped me and said, it's time for you to get out there and tell people what you know. Because, honestly, this has been my life's work. Okay? I'm here to assist this planet in shifting. And I know enough about the financial system and know the controls that go along with it and know that because the Federal Reserve is now defunct and does not have a charter that we're looking at a, a, transa a transaction that's going to change humanity. And that's a new financial system, and that's also the release of a lot of technology that would really benefit humanity. And that honestly is the biggest travesty. Not the money, but how... You know, there there have been cancer cures since, like, 1953, but they won't let you have them. You got people like Dr. E uh, Phoebe, who was killed by the CIA, who had all kinds of naturopathic cures for almost anything on the planet. You know, there's there's a lot of these things that are out there um, that just, it's been very difficult. Because literally, if you attack the control system, generally you get attacked. Yeah. yeah. And the problem, the, 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 what I realize right now is that the control structures is crumbling. Yeah. So now it is time for us all to speak our truth. Amen, brother. Yes. And that's and, why I'm yeah, and that's I'm I'm glad you're you're speaking your truth, and that's what I was going to ask you. You know, there's been a a whole lot of people. You know, they're wondering. You know, is there any hope? I, I mean. You know, we're looking at, you know, some people believe you should have vaccinations. Some believe they're being forced on us. And, 
it, it doesn't look very positive for the future. It, I mean, they're taking out another trillion dollars and they're just pulling money out of there like it's nothing. And it used to be, you know, we were going to be, you know, held accountable for all that money. And I don't know, things don't look that good. But do you have some hope by, from what you've seen in, in this specter with this person that you found, this female? Yes. Um, so, anyway... <laughs> There, there's a lot to talk about, but let me let me start with look when I when I found this when I found this woman when I found this story, I've been I'll tell you my I, my father was a a huge James Bond fan for some reason. I started watching James Bond James Bond films when I was five or six. I saw every single one of them multiple times with my father, and I've seen every single one since. I'm an expert on James Bond. Well. The reason I talk about it is because literally what is shown in James Bond movies is a precursor or a hint at what is going to be happening five to ten years into the future. Not only that, but the individual who controlled James Bond is known as M, okay? And when M was a man, which M, the man, M, left his position in 2012, just prior to that, James Bond they stopped using M as a man and they created Judy Dench as the new M, which was literally the exact same thing that was happening with the monetary system. M left and became a woman. So there's one example uh, of what I see as a, as a connection. Now, I have dozens. Um, if you look at the movie Spectre and you watch, there's a scene in Rome where James Bond is in sitting at this big long table at this palace and there, if you listen to what's going on in the room you'll see that every single thing they're talking about is doing right now that mm. they're you know that they're pushing for you know uh, like drugs or they're doing all child trafficking everything they're talking right about it in the film yeah. but wow. people would watch the movie and never even notice yeah, you know, we, we, what oh. movie were we watching last night, Dan? Iron, Iron Man 3. Iron, yeah, Iron Man 3, and same kind of thing. You know, what, what I've just recently realized, and maybe say six months ago I, I began to realize, that the enemy, um, you call him the devil, whatever you want, is required, apparently. I've been hearing this wording over and over again, but they're required to tell us in advance what they're going to do so somehow god makes them do this and so the way they do it is they make all these movies and make us feel like it's all false and you know it's just fantasy but truth is that's exactly what they're going to do and sure enough they do and then years later we see it and it's already been done it's you know that's out been out for years and it, it's shocking to me you know especially some of the stuff i just saw in that movie last oh, night I'm like man. oh my gosh they, they really had to tell their stuff you know, it's shocking. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it is. But, you know, they do. They, they put things in front, you know, they put things in front of us. Literally what they're really doing is they're just toying with humanity. You know, this is like the same thing that they do with the witnesses. I mean, look, I'm going to tell you this. Look, most of the witnesses I've met in my life are the most wonderful people I've ever been around. They have a great heart. They, they generally want to do they good. They want to, you know, be a godly person. They want to live right. But... You know, the problem is it's the control structure. And as you, Dan, have been talking, and you know, you know, you've been part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, you're sort of sucked into it, and it's just a big game, really. You know, they, they, they pull you in, and before you know it, you're controlled, and, you know, uh, you're not, you don't get what you thought you were getting into on many levels. Mm -hmm. I had no so idea there was no way out. I was... You know, when I got in, I, yeah. I heard somebody say the word the other day, and I really liked it. You you said one word. You said we were harvested, and they are some of the greatest yeah. harvesters. And, but I heard another word the other day, and it was called seeded, that we were seeded. And I thought, what the hell is that, seeded? And we were seeded with Paradise Tomorrow. And they have a wonderful recipe for pulling us in. And the recipe is they take a current event, an earthquake, what's going on in the world right now, and they say these are the signs of the time, and paradise is tomorrow, and you don't have to suffer. And so people jump on board, and it's, you know, God's name is Jehovah, and, and they have this tapestry, and, and, you know, then we go through the love bombs and the kingdom hall, but before you know it, we're in a trap. And if you leave, you're a good-for-nothing slave. If you leave, 
you know, you're a maggot, you're a pig returned to the mire, and you're going to get a death sentence. And your death sentence is you're going to suffer the second death where there is no resurrection because you left Jehovah. So little did I know when, when I was in there that when I left, my family was going to be cut off completely 100%. The organization cut off 100%. Everybody I known my whole life 100% cut off. Little did I know I was going to be abandoned. Little did I know if I tried to come back, it would take two to ten years, if ever, to get back in. This is this is mental abuse. This is this is this is crucifixion of the mind. And this is what they do to people. This is not a loving organization. This is not the, the Jesus going after the one sheep who drifted away. This is throw you away. This is go away. This is abandon you. I mean, we're watching, think, you know, Dave, we've watched videos on JW.org where the mother, the boy left, the boy got this fellowship because, you know, he, he went out with his girlfriend, he had sex, something happened. Um, and he's calling back. He's sorry. You know, he, he, he's woke up. You know, okay, I got to get back with Jehovah's organization. I got rid of the girl. And his mother's not answering the phone. And this kid might take two, three, four years to get back. What the hell? He has to sit in the back of the hall, quarantined, quarantined, publicly humiliated, publicly humiliated week after week for years. Are you talking about that JW video, Dan? Well, it's the one with the with the the video with the mother. She's showing her answering the phone or, or getting it's ready to. It's a JW to. video. It's a JW video, video on JW Dollar training video. Yes, that's what it is. And and so yeah. and what a, what a horrific thing because you know very possibly that little that that young teenager is just going to go blow his brains out after that. I mean, he's got nobody. You have no I mean, capabilities th- 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 at that age to cope. Well, no, it's no love. Well, you know what? <laughs> I mean, it's like me. I mean, you know, I was so distraught. I mean, I, I, I went to the drink, and you know, uh, I wasn't, you know, that bad of drinking. You know, the first whatever, and from my teens up into my twenties, and then I, I started progressing, and you know, it became a problem, like mm-hmm. in my late thirties. Of course. So, you of know, course. this is the kind of thing that I see now being recovered and being a person who assists people in recovery. So many of these people are. You know, they've gone through these things. And I know that's the case with many of the witnesses that I've come across, especially the women. And I know a lot of women who have been abused by their elder fathers. I have people in my family who have been abused by their elder fathers. And um, it's just amazing. And I just keep hearing stories after stories. And it's, it's it, you know. You, you want to know anyway, what's interesting, Dave? You, know you want to know what gets a yeah. lot of people killed in there? Yeah. I'll just finish the thought. And then, is somebody calling in? Go ahead. Hey, Dan. It's Chuck Pine. How are you doing? Hey, Chuck. How you doing? Oh, it's Jack. Oh, Jack. 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 Sorry, Jack. Oh, hi, Jack. Go ahead, Jack. Do you have a question? Hey, good good to hear you guys' voice. And uh, David, I just wanted to say thank you for doing the show. And um, I I understand where you're coming from. I I had a little stint with. uh, drinking a little too much, not to the point of being an alcoholic, but it was definitely a, a dealing mechanism, so I, I feel for you there. Um, I had an idea, um, something uh, you guys were talking about, uh, like the energy that you felt in the Kingdom Hall, and there's a there's an idea in the occult called an egregore, and with these egregores, it's basically a, a thought um, kind of manifesting itself on a metaphysical level. And so when there's a group such as like the Masons or maybe the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, or one of these groups, uh, it's believed that there's an egregore over their lodge or temple and it's basically being fed by a prayer or any kind of uh, thought or energy put into a specific goal. And so I, I had thought of that when it comes to Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, obviously, they're not praying to the correct God, but whatever it is that they're praying to, you know, you have 8 billion plus witnesses around the world with a specific goal in mind. That's a lot of energy going towards one goal. So just a, just a thought, just wanted to throw that out there. 
interesting thought. Thank you, yeah. Jack. Very. Go okay. ahead, Dave. Hey, we yeah. fixed the echo, guys. Thank, we fixed the you, problem. Jack. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Jack. I just wanted to say thank you for that because you're, you're correct. Um, that's a lot of what I'm dealing with right now, okay? Um, I've, been, I've been attacked, like, very, like, the heaviest I've ever in my life spiritually in the last year, couple of years, but especially in the last few months. Um, because I'm battling some things that most people would never take on, to be honest with you, uh, because of what I know. But what I find is that these, these uh, I call them like entities, and there's, they're using a lot of techniques, which is what's really uh, awakening me to what's really going on. So I'll tell you what I've been subject to real quick in the recent past. It's actually been happening to me in the last few days. Um, they're using, okay, so there are very, very high-level sorcerers, okay? People like Oprah Winfrey, people like, uh, who was it, uh, Nancy Bush, or, yeah, yeah, J uh, George Bush's wife. You know, Laura Bush. Uh, there's Laura a lot Bush. of them. Yep. And they're, they're, they are actually the, the highest-level witches, okay? And I've seen this, and I know this to be true. But, so they start like a process, and they can spin cast, from with this high level sorcery and they what they're really normally using as the energy behind their sorcery is um uh let's see how do i say this <laughs> um basically sacrifice they're sacrificing individuals and they're able to capture that energy and they're able to project the energy from these souls that have normally died for no reason and they're able to project them and cast them throughout the earth they then are directed to witch covens. And those witch covens then are doing their own little mini sorcery, you could call it, or witchcraft. And many of these individuals are members of the CIA. Uh, the, you know, all of these secret, the secret services of, uh, all over the world. Which at the end of the day all work for the same faction. Okay? And so, yep. what, what most people in, the, in these, in this, the secret services of all these countries don't know is that they all, everything they do is reported to a single hub. Okay? And that is especially true now and one of the reasons why we're not seeing a lot more destruction than we might, would normally see is that all of the, all of these uh, secret services, the CIA, the FBI, Interpol, Mossad, uh, KGB, wherever they are on the planet, they're all interconnected now. So if somebody, if one of those, if one of those groups does something in the world, uh, th the other group knows instantly. And so, this is what really is going on right now. We, we, people do not realize that literally everything sticks. Everything. The good news is, is that it takes a lot of money and a lot of evil people to keep running the show. And those days are now over. Because the Federal Reserve is the Ponzi scheme that basically they've been running, uh, been getting their free money since 1913. So that now the, the Federal Reserve is completely cut off. And I've been given this information just in the last week. Literally, they have no charter. Wow. There's no way for, the, for this cabal to fund anything. If you look at Joe Biden, what's going on right now on the news, which hopefully you should, you don't, but if you see this character that's up there on the TV, that is not the real Joe Biden. That is a Jesuit general out of the Pentagon, okay? And people might ask, well, why, what, who, what's going on? Well, they don't have any money. They literally can't even fly Air Force One because they don't have enough money. Hilarious. As of last week, the United States government owes Pfizer $70 million for vaccines, and they were unable to pay. Yay. And so Pfizer sent them, sent them a notice saying they will no longer send vaccines. So if you start to see vaccines not being available, you might know why, based on what I just said. That also is happening in Israel. Israel also can't pay for their vaccines, and they've been cut off in many other countries. So there is a big, there's a, there's a big control that is happening for the benefit of humanity that most people can't see now, but I hope that we'll be seeing it very, very soon. Because the information that I'm getting in my search is telling me that we've whittled down all of these people that are in the middle. All the middlemen, all the mafia, 
have been eliminated. The people at the top, most of them have been eliminated, and they have a very small crew just running a broken system. Okay? Wow. So, the, this quantum financial system is running right now. Okay? The plan of the United Nations, the plan of the, the United Nations Agenda 2030 and the New World Order was to keep marching everyone towards economic failure, worldwide economic collapse was their goal. COVID was the way they were planning to do it. Fortunately for us, uh, we have a lot of assistance. You could call it godly assistance. And those vaccines, the, excuse me, not the vaccines, but the COVID itself was supposed to be about 30 to 40% uh, deadly to everyone. So literally it would have wiped out 30 to 40% of the population based on their original design. When I say they, we're talking about the cabal. Luckily, there were a lot of groups, you could call them white hats, that were able to do what they needed to do to make sure that didn't happen. COVID, if you, honestly, if you guys want to go look, COVID has never been quarantined by the CDC, which means it, you can't, they've never been able to isolate it. If you can't isolate a virus, you can't make a vaccine. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly what they've done. If you go look up the vaccine patents under Bill Gates, patent number 060606, and you see that it contains an ingredient called luciferase, you might wake up a little bit and realize what's going on. Yeah. I don't want to shock anybody out there who's taken the vax. Again, the same forces that basically limited the deadliness of COVID have also come in and they've eliminated a lot of the, let's say, bad ingredients in the vaccine. Yes, people are still being affected. Some are passing away. But let's just say it's a very small percentage of people that are being affected compared to what they originally planned. And what they originally planned is written on the Georgia Guidestones. If your audience does not know what the Georgia Guidestones are, please look that up. It, they're, they are, it's a stone monument outside of Atlanta, and it basically says that there, the population of the planet is going to be is going to be dropped down to 500 million, and there's going to be 144,000 ruling class. There's your 144,000 witnesses. This is the big scam. I was told at one time my grandmother might have been one of the 144,000. I know that she wasn't, but they make, they took a story that's actually death and destruction and tried to plant it in the witnesses and make them believe that you're like some super god if you sip the wine on Memorial Night, okay? That's right. So, that's what I've come to find. Yeah, and they treat everybody uh, else like crap, like everybody else is, you know, if you're not right. of that class of the 144,000, you're so a piece of, you know what? Anyway, someone else right. wanted to say something. Uh, we want to open up the line. Yeah, could I ask David a question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Try to get in, um, David. Listen, my son is the same age as you, and he's been telling me this stuff for years. And he yeah. won't even have me on Facebook as a friend because he said he doesn't want anybody to connect me to him because he's afraid of what's going to happen to him because of what he knows. So I, I have done enough and heard enough to know. I believe, I'm going to say it out loud, I believe everything you're saying. And I have a question because I, I'm begging you, you have just titillated and touched on so much. It's like an incredibly huge, intricately woven web. And you're touching different parts of it, but every time you really get into it, you get interrupted and sidetracked and somebody wants to know something and have a question and a comment, like me. So I was right. wondering, would you consider, David, so you don't feel like you have to rush, would you consider coming on a few more times? On, on sure, the yeah. I, I love uh, Dan and Angela. I just met them not long ago. But, look, I'm, I'm out here to tell my truth. And I think if I can help people open up and awaken and start doing some things that, you know, really going to help humanity, this is what it's all about. It's time for us as humans to unite. They've used religion against us for so long. And, yes, Joseph Witness's religion is bad. But comparison to what the Catholics are doing, um, I'm sorry, it's like low level. <laughs> um, and and Marie has. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, Dan. I have, Hi, Daniel. Go ahead. 
Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to say that um, we don't have a guest tonight, and this is totally fascinating. If, if he has time or, or willing, um, I don't have a problem with uh, continuing on for however long he wants to. This is this is totally uh, mind uh, blowing, but it rings. Uh, it has the ring true to it. So I'm, I'm finding this very fascinating. Yeah, thank you. Well, we can go as long as Daniel can hold up. I mean, you know, David, I'm sorry, David. As long as you can yeah, hold right. up, you know. <laughs> yeah, hey, I got to get another half hour with my voice. It's starting to crack a little bit. But, um, hey, you guys, you know, look, I let me, let, me, let me tell you a couple things. There's things I really want to get out. So let me tell you some of the things I really think are some of the most important for your audience. And, okay, so basically... Um, what I found is what's known as the restoration plan, okay? The restoration plan is the only plan that's currently um, viable on this planet. The Rothschild, the Illuminati, the Kazarian Mafia, all of the other uh, bankers, the, I mean, you're talking bankers from, like, going back thousands of years. Um, all of these individuals that have really had a lot of control all basically done. They they are option. And they've been told the only thing that they can do is back the restoration plan. Now, I suggest that you guys all go to speakproject.net. It's a website. And this is where I have found most of the information I'm talking about, much of it. This is where you can find information on the guardian of the planet. Her name is Kimberly Goguen. And you can do your own research. And you may not vibe with it, and that's fine with me. Again, I'm not here to convince anyone. I'm here to tell you what I believe based on my story. And I will tell you, I have double-checked myself. I've got dozens of people that I ask all the time, am I crazy? Am I going off on some wild goose chase? Am I dead on? Where am I? And I've got literally a lot of people that see things exactly as I see them. I'm sorry, what project is that? Speak? Beak? What? How do you put the first letter? Uh, yeah. Like speak, like I'm speaking. Oh, thank you, thank now. you. S P E A K project dot net. Okay, oh, thank so you. this is the main website where the Guardian is basically recreating everything she can for the people. Because what you see right now is a complete and total collapse of the government, the banking system, the corporate structure, you name it. Religion. Because without money, those individuals cannot operate, and that's what's going on right now. They're being squeezed. They do not have the free money they've had for since 1913, okay? Because they basically, banks can create money out of thin air, and most people don't understand that. But you can check that out. I mean, you put in $100, huh? the bank can go out 900 It's that simple. So basically, so this, this, this restoration plan, what it really is, it's about being ready for when things start falling apart and we need the people need to rise up and do the right thing, okay? Because basically this whole control structure I talked about is 4,000 pieces. There's 4,000 pieces. The map itself, the Guardian has the original map and it shows the center of control at the very top. There's a single seat and she now holds that seat. There is no human on this planet that I'm aware of that has more uh, power than this woman. She's, fortunately for everyone on the planet, she's a very good woman. She means to do well. She's here to help us, not hurt us. And she's trying as hard as she can to get the good things out to the people, like some financial support and to give out money for projects. And when I say projects, well, the Guardian is going to give out money to people who want to assist humanity. And the primary thing that we need to do is we need to get the five basic needs to everyone on the planet. And so I start to think about places like Africa and South America and parts of Asia where people live in very impoverished conditions and maybe they have a bowl of rice if they're lucky is all they get through the day. You know, they need good medical care, a roof over their head, food, uh, you know, and, and have availability of transportation, communication, and all those things. So that's what we're, that's the primary goal is of the restoration plan. Number one, 
get humanity taken care of. Get them sustained. Stop with the, uh, you know, the scarcity program. So that's the majority of what's going on. Now there's a lot more to it because there's money coming. A lot of this, most of this money is sitting in this trust I mentioned, and it's for the benefit of humanity because it was stolen from all of us. If, if people are able to view and comprehend this power structure I speak of, what you'll see is that the four thousand, each one of those four thousand components, is a siphon to siphon money and harvest from the people, just like the Jehovah's Witness Watchtower Society did. And we mentioned, you know, I don't know how many tens of millions of dollars I've seen people in the in uh, organization leave to the, the society and leave their their friends and families broke. Uh, you know, like you said, where does this money go? Yeah. Well, good question. It's a, it's a harvest. So where does it go? Well, whoever made the back room deal to keep their 10 or 20% of whatever money they collect, they give the other 80% to the people who set them up. Who's that? Well, if you know Taze Russell was a Mason, and he's, he's buried in a Masonic, uh, Masonic land in a uh, pyramid, that might give you a hint. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, that's where it started. He's the seed. And if you look at Taze, and you look at some of the stories back in the day where he was standing on the Brooklyn Bridge waiting for Armageddon, but he was affiliated with these couple other religions. What he was doing was he was showing the cabal what he was willing to do to start the religion of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So, you know, there's a lot to it when you look at it. You know, this is the thing. They don't, if you're, even if you're bloodline, they don't just give you the ball. you got to prove yourself to them and prove that you can do something that in this particular case was rather evil because all religion is made to control everybody and look outside themselves rather than looking inside themselves for the answers. Yeah. Because what I found is that source is within and is also outside of me. So I can tap into my God particle. I can tap into the source within me. And that's been one of the most powerful things for me in my, you know, in, in my life. A girl has a question. Gail says, is the Evergreen ship in the Suez Canal connected to something we Yes, that's, a, one of, that's one of the last-ditch efforts by the Rothschilds to... Well, it was really... There's a lot of things that have gone on. The two biggest things, if you guys are here in the United States looking at your gas prices going up, there's two events that they pulled for that. One was the ever, Evergreen, ever uh, whatever, ever... Evergreen oh, ship. What the ship is. In yeah, in the in the Suez, but the yeah. one prior was the they used um, they used lasers and um, weather weapon technology to drive that storm into Texas uh, a oh, couple yeah. months ago. I figured that out. Yeah. Um, so you know uh, that I will tell you, there's good news that weather weapon technology was destroyed after that event. Yay. I will also tell you the guard the Guardian has technologies that are over 100 years more advanced than anything we've ever seen. Wow. So she can do handle a lot of things that most people would never believe, like disintegrating 10 Chinese battleships or, um, you know, making sure that the some of the, the deadly things that are going into the vaccines are not received where they're manufactured. So there's a lot of things that are happening, but people can't really connect to it because they're unaware of the, of the quantum mapping system and how it works. Now, if you guys want to look at what the quantum mapping system is, the Guardian Kimberly um, has a one-hour video telling you how it works. She explains it all, and it's on the Speak Project YouTube channel. If you search under YouTube, Speak Project, go down about 20 videos down the bottom, and you'll see Kimberly. She's a very attractive woman standing in front of a whiteboard. And she explains the system that she now controls. That system controls everything controls banking communication mm -hmm. the internet the military intelligence um all different kinds of things and that's good news because what used to be that that system is quantum so it's not like any computer that you've seen uh it's it's trinary not binary no one even knows what trinary is i have things in silicon valley that two years ago they tried to start working on trinary they, they t I met a guy, and he told me. And he said they worked on it two years, they couldn't figure out what it was. But that's what that's the technology that now exists. It is in the hands of a guardian, 
who is here to assist humanity. Now, this woman is not a savior, okay? She's a woman who is here to get the controls that were uh, tainted. The, basically, this computer that I'm talking about, the global mapping system, was uh, it received a very, uh, like a virus program that was installed by the cabal. And how do we know it's the cabal? Because it's got a five-pointed pentagram on top of it. So when the Guardian went into the system, she saw that they were running a pentagram, a cabal pentagram, that had all these sharp edges and was set to harvest. Harvest everyone on the planet. Okay? Well, when she got control of the system and learned how to use it, she removed the pentagram, and now that global mapping system runs on an infinity, which is basically a figure eight, which is sideways. So if you guys know, like I know, I know a lot about money. It's cash flow in, cash flow out. Money in, money out. Energy in, energy out. Uh, I do a lot of service to humanity. When I'm out there helping these people that are suffering with whatever it is, whether it be addiction or, you know, handing them socks on the street, you know, that energy comes and circles back to me. And just like a lot of witnesses were out there pioneering and stuff like that, you know, you get a really, you get a positive result. Did you, ever, and effort and energy. did you ever hear that guy that says that um, to say uh, whenever you give money or you receive money, you say arigato, arigato. It, it just means um, bless the money, you know, as it's going out. And then arigato, bless the money as it's coming in. And he really believes in that. And that guy is very, very, very blessed. He, he just blesses the money going in, bless the money going out. Anyway, so someone's got yep. a question in here real quick. Right. Somebody's wondering if the org, we wondered if the org, um, if they're getting away with the abuse issues because of who rules them. Yeah, they're all, I mean, look, where, where were they headquartered? In Zionist New York. Who's the governor of Zionist New York? This guy Cuomo who's trying to make it legal to harvest babies? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Look, this is the darkest, look, I'm sorry for people who are in New York. But let me just tell you, the darkest wizardry, the darkest energy that exists on the planet comes right out of Manhattan, okay? Wow. There are tunnels under Manhattan that would horrify every person on this every person on this call. The tunnels, I have friends that have been down there. There are, they do trafficking, they have baby farms, they have uh, like elite hotels and spas for the rich and famous. Um, here's a really good point. Here's something really good for people who want to know about Guantanamo Bay. Gitmo is a real military base on the top, but you know what's on the bottom? Mm -mm. Out, famous, where they have things like med beds and they can reverse age you for ten or twenty years. And again, back to another James Bond reference. If you go back to Die Another Day, which was the James Bond movie with Halle Berry, you'll see that James Bond was on an island in Cuba with a health spa on it. And it was, right. They were doing technology. And you know what? That's exactly what's going on in Cuba. They tell you everything, but people don't link it. They don't see it. You, you know, it, it's frustrating so, to me that, you know, you feel like the cabal is getting what they deserve and they're, they're being sent to Guantanamo. And then all of a sudden, or Gitmo, I'm sorry. And then all of a sudden we find out that they are um, being blessed, blessing their socks off underneath this wonderful hotel palace under the ground instead. And, and, why is this? Uh. Well, you know, I want to say too, uh, Dave, that that uh, video about Kim. I watched that, you know, when you told me to go to it, and I was blown away. I never knew it, th this thing's so deep, and for her to be able to explain it, oh my God, it was the most powerful thing I've ever. I've never seen the infrastructure of money. Did you, Angela? No, no, she was brilliant. She that was way. brilliant. We were like. I mean, Are you kidding? I, like I, I, I don't know that I buy that she's the guardian of the money, however, just FYI, but, but she was brilliant, and she, and she really does understand the system and, and how it all works. It freaked you know, me the, out. The, the money and, and how it all works and who, who's responsible to who and how okay, you got to have this code and this key to, to get into this and, the, and each level and the different banking levels. It was brilliant. It was brilliant, and she really gets the system. And we haven't done tons and tons of research. Oh. It was just we watched that. It was blowing us away. Way. Yeah, well, she's quite extraordinary. You know, the story behind it is maybe a little hard for most people to believe, but I've had a, like a two and a half year running view of this, and I've I've done my best 
to like make sure that I'm not you know like that I'm not seeing the right thing I mean I what I've really found is that I have gone in I have seen so much evidence I have literally been on calls with her I have I have been on the inside and see what's going on and let me say look she's being attacked extremely heavily as well as my, me and all of the people that are really supporting her and you gotta sort of ask yourself something why are you attacking me if what if what I'm doing is not true good point there's no reason if, if she's not right if she's not real if everything that you know is going on is, is just a ball of bullshit, excuse me, but then why are they attacking? Because they're attacking her and they're attacking everybody that I'm associated with that supports her. Wow. Heavily. But you know what? It tells me, because every time I get attacked, I get stronger. Yeah. That's right. And that's what's telling me that I'm on the right path. And I'm also talking to Source, and Source said, stay on your path. Stay on your path, because when this thing changes, no one's going to know what's going on. And that's why I'm out here telling people. Because even if you look at it and you don't believe it, at least you will have heard. So when it all happens and you, all of a sudden people know what's going on, they know about the quantum system, they know about these things I'm speaking, they'll have a reference back to what it is. Because believe me, when Kim is planning to drop money in people's accounts worldwide very soon, because she has full control of all of the... Uh, of all the financials from all over the world. So when when this happens, look at your bank account and look at the website that's on your on that transaction. Somewhere between two and four thousand dollars. She said the original amount was going to be thirty three hundred and thirty dollars for every bank account in the world. Of course, if you're in a different country, it would just be uh, the same currency you're using. Just it would be exchanged. So. This is where we're at right now, and that's why I'm very excited to just tell you that little piece, because I've been waiting, I've been watching, I've been watching the Federal Reserve slowly get completely dissolved to a point where it's not functioning, and that's where we are right now. Not that. only that, Guard has full control, and that means she yep. can actually drop money into our account. Someone's when it trying, happens... Someone's trying to uh, speak there. Who's speaking? Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, hello, Dan. It's Mark Taft. Um, yeah, how you doing? Good. How you doing, Mark? Yeah, I'm doing okay, Dan. Yeah, Dan. Um, yeah, uh, I know you got a lot going on, so I don't want to disrupt you or anything like that. Would you have time for me to jump on tonight at all, by good chance, or not? Yeah, let us let us finish the show, Mark, and then absolutely, you can. Do, I know you, Mike. Mark likes to do some. How long, how long are you going to be? Because you know my time is very limited right now, so I'll leave it up to you. Twenty nineteen minutes. Nineteen minutes, because then yeah, our guest 10, our guest has to leave at that point. How long? Nineteen minutes. Okay, well that's about all I can I can wait on. So about nineteen minutes, if you can get me on, that'll be fine. I won't be very long tonight. But uh, I'd just like to share another motivational quote with you tonight um, okay. that is a very ideal one for okay. sure. You okay. gotcha. Thank you, Mark. All right. Does anybody else want to ask David anything while we got him on? I want to say this, David. Thanks. A lot of people have said Thanks, they Dan. want to have you on another. No, I just want to know if he's going to be able to finish what he was saying. Yes, he, yes. He, Go ahead. I get so far. I'm sorry. I'm trying sorry. to. I'm hanging on to everything you say. Gotcha. Sorry. We're going to have him on another show, uh, Anne Marie, and maybe your show. Or yeah, Jim. It. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, for sorry Amory, you, like, what, what authority do you need? Um, <laughs> Everything, the Manhattan, <laughs> Red Books, about Manhattan, the Manhattan, uh, what was going on underground, the secret kidnappings of so many children, and taken down in these underground cells where they were beaten and tortured, and those that survived were heavily programmed to do things, and just a lot of really horrible things that were, in, and there were like two or three books on this I was reading a few years back, and I doubt that you can get these books anymore. I, I was afraid someone would catch me with them. And they were going on to the, the deepest part of what's behind everything, like you were saying. And, and that's why I'm trying to hang on to what you're saying. <laughs> you know, so that's my Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let, let, let me say this, because thank you, yes, specifically in regard to New York. So you remember when they had the hospital ships out there? Yes, sir. And the park, and everyone was wondering what was going on, and... Trump's pulling the kids out and all that. Well, um, 
based on what I found, that's not actually true. That was all sort of a stage show, um, if you will. Um, as far as the actual eradication of those uh, cities, tunnels, and facilities, um, it's rather limited, from what I understand, but many of them have been taken out. You know, there are White House out there working, but let's just say they're not, uh, it, it's not like they're part of Trump's team, let's just say that, okay? Um, there are a lot of other individuals that are working for the benefit of all mankind. Um, there are so many, with, there's so much going on with trafficking. People only had an idea of how the human life is literally just used as a harvesting. It's just harvested. I mean, they're, they're taking blood from children. They're torturing them to make adrenochrome. Well, one question they're... regarding their using children. Um, I wish I remembered what it was called, but they were talking about literally taking the brains from small children and making like a pate out of it, and it's called something, and it's almost said in a joking way to help them um, reduce their powers. I assume you've heard yeah. of that. Yeah, spirit cooking, yeah, you got your, you got a lot of people, you know, it comes out, and, uh, anyway, it's crazy, because even some of the people in Hollywood, like Lady Gaga, I mean, it's like, go look at the pictures around with what's going on with her, it's like, they, that's a normal practice for those people, it's just absolutely sick, and this is the problem, is that it's hard to wake up, because a lot of people... Pardon me? Them. Yes. Sir, I'm just getting on, I'm sorry, I, I've missed most of what you've said, during the program, where are you getting this information from? God. Speakproject.net is, is a a resource that you can, it's a website you can go to and look at a lot of what I'm speaking of. I'm also, like I said, I also got a lot of this from Source. Source, my creator has directed me to find this information and share it. And I'm not here to try to convince you, I'm trying to tell you what I believe, and if you want to research it, I suggest you do. Yeah, can I say something? Um, I heard a, a, this a shocking thing. I've been hearing a whole bunch of things lately, but this really intelligent guy who is very educated, historian, um, he's out of, he always been out of the box kind of a guy, and he interviewed this rabbi, and I, I just was shocked because the, the rabbi was one of the Kazarian. It's not really, he's not a real Jew, but he actually says right, right flat out that he works for Lucifer, and goes on to say how that massive group of, of his his group of Jews um, are actively and have been for many, many, many years, I, I think he said thousands, of working on trying to destroy mankind. And one of the things that they, they've been doing, and he, it, was a, it was a big question and answer type thing, but one of the sick things that came out was is that how proud, he, basically they think that they've won the battle with mankind and they're about ready to wrap it up. And um, so he's proud to say all that they've been doing to all of us. And one of them is to take our children, like uh, for specifically Passover, when they take, I think, something like 300,000 of our kids, or maybe it was 30,000, but um, they disappear every year. And then they um, bloodlet them, which means let all the, you know, cut them, let the blood out. And then they take the bodies to the meat plants, and they're ground up and systematically sent to places specifically most definitely McDonald's so they receive human meat ground up like hamburger and they put it in our food so that we're eating our own children I mean the guy was so proud to, to tell facts. it it was one of your videos I think Dave that you sent to us but that was so shocking that they're so proud that that you know they take the blood and we eat our own children it was like it, oh they, my god they're just doing every well, kind of cruelty to us well you know that's that's the that's the highest level Illuminati faction known as the Black Sun. If most people never heard of that that faction, they are the what is known as the Hidden Hand. They are interwoven in every Illuminati faction, from the Jesuits to the Templars to you know you name it. They're everywhere, and they're the ones right now that are at the top. Why are they exposed? Because they've always been hidden, and now all of the other Illuminati factions have like lost their power because. Like I say, they've been cut off from money. Yep. So the ones at the very top now are the ones floating the boat. And as we can see, you know, they're trying everything they can from, you know, using weather weapons to increase the price of gasoline, you know, uh, you know, putting uh, ships into the side of the Suez Canal, you name it. Yeah. But that's all they got. Yeah. I mean, they literally, thank goodness they don't have nukes. You know, I, you know I, what I'm saying? Yes. The nukes, all the nukes. 
you know, all the nuclear codes have been secured. I want you guys to know that. that that's like the biggest blessing to mankind. The nuclear codes have been secured. The Guardian has possession of them. So you I, cannot use really high-level nukes at this point. i got to tell you a cool thing. Some lady, Dan and I saw a video, she was a really um, humble old lady in Italy, and she doesn't watch TV. She just a simple old, simple old lady. Well, she had a dream, and basically in the dream, this big old huge fat snake that covered the whole earth. It just kind of, every country, every country every was, you know, the, you, she could see that in her dream. And then, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. then out of the snake was coming like pus and, and, you know, like it was dying, like it was getting all kinds of wounds. Um, and specifically, right. the, well, the worst case of it in, I think, Europe and the U.S., the I think. The and the head the head was located in her dream in the Vatican. So you heard about this, huh? Um, so they, they yeah. said that the body of it, it, it that it's it's so man mangled it, it, that in the Vatican, it's absolutely an in America, agony. It's it, it, severed in well, almost Yes, in, in America, it's severed almost in two. But the head of it in, in the Vatican is absolutely screaming in agony because it's dying. And so um, right. the way I get it is because of um, so many different factors, but our prayers are definitely one of those. And so, you know, I think we need to keep on, if, in my opinion, if you guys believe in this, to pray that this, this, this whole cabal thing comes all the way down. And I just envision taking scissors and cutting all the way through that snake in the middle. And um, anyway, it's kind of exciting because to me, it's just um, a, a sign. Oh, yeah. And then some other guy got a dream about it. And um, kind of explained that, um, yeah, he's the one who explained that, that the body was almost cut in two, that he saw that in a dream. And um, so anyway, the two of them together, came, that, that all came out. And I believe it's true with all my heart because um, I just feel like that, that this is somehow it's going to be ending shortly. And it, it's really exciting to me, and it's encouraging because of these dreams people are having. Even Dan has dreams about it. And I, I do feel that we're about ready to have some relief at least for four years. That's kind of how I see it, at least four years. So, anyway. Yeah, well, it, it's happening now. I mean, the beginning, I believe, is very soon because, you know, I just we're, we're, in, we're in, a, in a really incredible time frame. In this galaxy, we just entered into the photon belt, and we're in the age of Aquarius. Um, you know, I mean, and people might go, well, well, that's related to horoscope and I don't want to deal with it. Well, look, the Mayans, the Mayans lived and they had recorded three of these 16,000 year periods on planet. So 2012 was the marker. Okay. But it's a lot bigger shift point than most people believe. You know, it's, it's not, you know, the three seconds it takes you to put a clutch, you know, put your clutch into your old stick shift. It's like, you know, five to 10 years. And there's a lot of different things going on. I mean, what you just mentioned with the snake, yes, that there are there were two of the darkest entities. You could call them satanic entities, but in actuality, they were probably a hundred times more powerful than Satan. Mm -hmm. And those, one of them was called the Destroyer, and that entity was removed from the planet just over a year ago. And there was another entity, and I'm sorry, I do not know the name, but it was just removed about mm, two months ago. And wow. what's really interesting is that like, I felt both of these uh, removals. Like, I knew. I was like, whoa, a bunch of darkness just left. Wow. And I have a sensitivity to it, and I have a lot of very, very gifted spiritual people around me who were able to confirm it. So, you know, we are winning this battle. This Yay. is a period. There is a battle between dark and light. And, you know, if, if your only reference point is Jehovah and Satan... Sorry, you got a little bit of get of uh, growth to, to get to to really understand. Because in all actuality, Satan was is generally played by an individual. It's a name. It's a given name. But they put so much fear around it, and they wrapped it in the Bible. So that's what everyone considers to be the most dark, darkest entity. When in fact, it's just a name. Just like a lot of these people call themselves gods. That's just a name. They're just regular humans like us. But they're given, because of their power and their bloodline, they're given those titles. And that, that happens to be the case with a lot of the people I've, you know, that I, that I know. I, they've, they've come in contact. Like, I know people who actually met with, the pre, with Kim's predecessor. Um, this guy... They met with, with who? Well, the, Kim's predecessor, his name was Marduk. And Marduk 
We used mm. to run mostly out of San Francisco, and I was a child growing up in San Francisco, and I feel his energy like I may have been in a room with him because I went, you know, I've been pretty privileged in my life, I'll just say. I mean, I, you know, some of my family's in castles in Europe, was literally, and, you know, some of the family I have. So I was brought into some pretty high levels, you know, at the Olympic Club in San Francisco, uh, all cabal, cabal, cabal. Yeah. Um, like, like that, you know, I didn't get it to go into the Bohemian Club, but, you know, if you guys know anything about the Bohemian oh, yeah. Grove, the yeah. something parts that they do there, well, you might start to understand uh, a lot of that. Hey, Dan. Yeah. This, this, is, this is Jimmy Bell. Hi, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. How you doing? I'm good, guys. How y'all doing? Great. Doing great. Great to hear from you. D did you have a question tonight? Yeah, actually, I just want to say, uh, David, this has been some very, very interesting information that you presented tonight, and I just want to say it's finally refreshing to hear someone else who's been down this road as well. Um, I tell you what, I would love to sometime have a conversation with you or even get you on um, our show we have called The Roundtable, because I think a lot more people need to hear this information. They need to wake up because there's a lot of stuff going on right now that so many people have buried their heads in the sand with and just are refusing to see it. You got it, Jimmy. You, uh, maybe get my information from Dan after the show or whenever, and I'd be happy to come on. That would be great. I, I think, uh, I know Deasis, my co-host, he would love it. Um, and I think the audience would love to hear this stuff too. So I appreciate you, you being on tonight. And good information, Dan and Angela. Thank you. Thank you know the you. truth. Yeah. The truth will set us free. But you know what? It takes courage to to say the truth. And thank God, David came on. Hell or high water. Agree or disagree. Speaking from experiential. Speaking from his past. And saying, I'm going to put it out there. And, and, you know, Jesus did that. He put it out there, and he was crucified for it. Yeah. He was trying to liberate us, That's right. you know, from religiosity. He was trying to set us free, you know. And, and, and can I say this? You know, you guys, I'm a worldwide Church of God, ex-worldwide ex Church of God. And so, you know, Dan's the XJW here. But, you know, I, I think that's the thing I marvel the most about with, with all the XJWs. They've been they've been so severely severely abused, and then coming. I think the worst of all religions. I really really do think this, and because Dan and I we studied them all. Trust me, we've been in them all, all of them, and a lot too. And so you guys are so open minded because I feel like it's because the abuse has been so severe that that when you pop out, you're you're a little bit more quickly willing to open up to the truth and the reality of things as opposed to most churches. Because in in my way of looking at it, most churches today, they don't want to hear any of this. It's head in the sand. They just don't want to go down this road. But you guys are more willing than any other religion to face it for what it is. And for that, I have to give you um, a thumbs up, big thumbs up. And I'm so amazed. I'm so amazed by you guys all, all of you, really. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Well, great. I'd, I'd love to come back on, but hey, I know uh, Mark is uh, probably needing to, to deal with his time frame, and um, I, I think I've given you guys a lot of information. Yeah. One other thought I'd, I'd really like you guys to look at, the Guardian Kimberly is established a news network of her own that is not tainted. So she has the highest level of intelligence, and she puts it out on this channel. It's a web page. It's called UNN. <gasps> Dot today. So Can you say that again? United say, say, say that one more time. Yeah, UNN, yeah, UNN dot today, which is United News Network, and that is the Guardian's web, that's her uh, news center. And basically, right now, she is doing uh, five days a week. She, her and her associates are putting out the most important intel that is completely different than anything you're going to hear anywhere in all media. But what I found is that what she puts out about two weeks later, a lot of it filters into the alt media, which tells me who's in charge, who's got the first and the best information, Kimberly Doguin. And she's on UNN.today. Check out speakproject.net. I really thank you guys all for listening. I, I really am looking forward to get back, and thank you, Dan and Angela. 
Really appreciate thank, you. Thank you. Thank, you, David. thank you, David. And how can people get a hold of you if they want to invite you onto their show? Uh, you know, Anne Marie, Jimmy, all these guys. Can they just message you on uh, uh, yeah. uh, Messenger? They can, they can send. Yeah, they can send. Uh, you know, they can send me an email to Jacksephine at mail dot com. J a c k s a p h i n e at mail dot com. Jacksephine. And uh, they can reference the show, and I'll get back to them. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Well, thank you, David. It was a privilege and we enjoyed it. And hey, if you're interested, check this stuff out, you know, if you want to look at it. And uh, at least there's some hope there. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you again, so much. David. Take care. Hey, can we repeat that email one more time? Okay. Sure. Jacksephine, that part uh, of it. Yeah. So J A C K S A P H I N E at mail.com. Great. Thank well, you. you. Or you can find him on Messenger. Just type in his name on Messenger, too, and, David, and friend him. David, I've sent him a message already. Okay, cool. cool. David Crony, C-R-O-E-N-I, David. And just, yeah, you'll find him that way. Well, thank you, Rick, too. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thanks for coming on our show oh, uh, tonight. Uh, Mark oh. Wants, uh, uh, oh, yeah, Rick, Mark, we got Mark, time Mark, for Mark, Mark to give his positive affirmation, right, Rick? Yeah, make it quick, Mark. We have to get yes. off. Yes, I'm, well... Hi, how's it going, Dan? Uh, thanks for letting me on. Appreciate it. Thank you so very, very much. And I had a lot going on tonight, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes, Dan, the last the last guy was just on, gave an excellent speech, and he gave a lot of information. I'll let you know. I over the last year, I've researched things like the Cabal and uh, all these other uh, secret societies, including the Illuminati and all these other you know things we don't know about that's going on in the world that's really coming out in the open now and getting more and more public. So. Um, I've been, you know, learning about a lot of the same things you were specifically talking about. And it's it's amazing, but it's also very, very shocking. But, yeah, there's a lot of truth to it. Okay. All right. There's a lot of truth to it, my tell us, Tell us your, 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 your good stuff. We're waiting. Okay. Okay. Well, I just want to throw that in there. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to just mention, too, Dan, that if you get a chance, go to YouTube and watch this video. It's probably close to two hours long called The Fall of the Cabal. Yeah, it's the called cabal. The Fall of the Cabal. It's okay. very educational. Yeah. Okay, we will. The Fall of the and Cabal, you, okay. You, you should cabal. check it out. Okay. Yes, yeah, you should check it out. I would encourage anyone to check it out and really learn just what the hell is going on in this world nowadays and has been for the last, you know, 100 years, if you know what I mean. Sounds good. You know, oh, it's, boy. it's pretty amazing stuff. You okay. know what I mean? I'm, I'm, yeah. And I'm 100% dead serious, sir. Thank you. So, um, yeah, you're very welcome. Okay, so, yes, Dan, for my special motivational quote or motivational affirmation for, for today. Um, this is another, uh, once again, another major, uh, totally awesome motivational quote from Mr. Bernard Hiller, the famous uh, acting and success coach. Um, and tonight's title for today's positive affirmation quote is, listen to your body or it will make you sick. So, can I go ahead and start? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. The secret to an energized, successful, and healthy life is a strong connection to the messages that your body specifically is constantly sending you. Now, we know the body does not lie and will always tell you the truth about any situation you find yourself in. But are you listening? Well, your instincts are messages being told to you in a whisper, but if you have a lot of loud chatter going on in your head, well... The truth is you will miss it. These messages will also tell you that you must do next in order to live your authentic life. Listening to your messages is not good enough. Without satisfying your body's needs and instincts with actions, your body will rebel. Now, most people live in their heads while being totally disconnected from their bodies. In doing so, they are also disconnected from their gifts, their inspired ideas, and their inner powers. This is why they will never live the life that they, that they specifically was meant for them. Now, as tragic as that get, gets or as is, it gets even worse. Medical studies have now shown that if you do not act on these guiding messages that your body specifically gives you, then severe medical illnesses will arise. Studies have shown that painful emotions unexpressed from your past impact your immune system, your health, and your well-being. 
this is science. This science is specifically called psychoneural immunology. That's psychoneural immunology. I believe that there is a strong mind-body connection and that illnesses are specifically connected to our thoughts of worrying, suffering, and negative thinking. Your body will never forgive you for all the damage and harm you are doing to your body's cells. Resentment and bitterness are like acid that causes major inflammation and a lack of self-nurturing and caring for oneself can lead to serious destructive consequences. The documentary Heal states that people who are not expressing painful emotions give deadly disease a home to live in. That should scare you into action. Dr. Turner, who has studied thousands of cancer remissions and cures, specifically says that there are some key factors that they all had in common. Here are some of them. Number one, started to release unexpressed traumatic emotions and forgive those that had negatively impacted them. Number two, increased their positive thinking and started living in joy, fun, and grace. Number three, deepening their spiritual connection. Number four, increased their social connections. Loneliness can be deadly. Number five, started following their intuitions and instincts. Mm, that's a good one. Number six, they found, they found purpose and strong reason for living. Now, doctors know that treating a patient with just a, a prescription is not enough. They must specifically help that person get connected with their inner emotional turmoil. Their thoughts, attitude, and feelings will determine specifically how quickly they will recover. I've done many talks about this subject. So in closing, please treat your body like it belongs to someone you love. Following your instincts are crucial to living your creative life. Choosing to not live this way will for sure make you feel empty, depleted of energy, and very sick. The word disease means that you are in disease. Disease. Meaning your body and mind are not connected. Things are not flowing as one. Learn to forgive. Let go of anger. Stop agonizing and fully express all your feelings, positive or negative. Listen to what your body is telling you with an open heart. Increase laughter, movement, love, rest, fun, music, and your body. Heart and soul will forever thank you. Thank you. Live with passion, Mr. Bernard Hiller. Very wow, good. excellent, excellent Thank advice. You, Mark. Well, I'll Thank tell you, you what, that's a lot to think about. I'm glad that was recorded. Thank you for um, sharing that. That was beautiful, Mark. Yes. That was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you very much, Dan. This is this this subject is really really important for everyone, anyone and everyone, including myself, especially myself, everyone out there, including you, Dan, Angela, yeah. Rick. Yes. I mean, all you people out there. This is so very very important because we destroy ourselves with this, you know with the type of negative energy we're getting all the time. We destroy ourselves with it. Well, we, the bad attitude, the negative thinking, it destroys us. We, this guy is 100% right on the money of what he's specifically talking about. We spend a lot of time in toxicity. We spend a lot of time in fear. And like you said, it's like a yep. cancer. It's like a cancer. It's disease. And yep. that's part of the problem with 90% of the people that left is they've got to recover. And you've told them how to do it. You know, reconnect, read positive right, exactly. things, connect with God, you know. we got to do these things, and we'll, we can recover. Our bodies were meant to heal, but if we stay in the trauma, like you said, it's a mind-body connection. If we're thinking the bad thoughts and feeling the fear and living in anxiety, then it's going to take a toll on our body. But but thank you, Mark. we got to hand this off yep. now to, to Daniel. they got another show yep. starting, but thank, thank well, you for showing up. We love you, brother. Yes, thanks for everybody for coming thank on. Thank you very much, Dan. I greatly appreciate it. And like to share it with you tonight and uh and and all the very best to you dan i know you got some other people to bring on so I'll let you go but thank you very much and uh and we'll talk again in the near future and god bless you all okay thank you mark thank, thank, you. You, thank you thank you everybody thank you thank you yeah you bet take care yep. yeah take care thank good you, everybody good night well my goodness gracious thank you dan and angela and david my goodness what a great program we got to record it, and more right. and more people are going to be listening to it. I know it's going to be great. So thank you all for coming on tonight. We're now going to Healing After the Watchtower that's coming up next right here.